to, uh, to this family. Allow me to begin by uh, giving respect to God and to uh, Son Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, our, our keeper. Mm -hmm. Respect to the clergy and because I was well taught by my grandfather, he said, you never go to a church without acknowledging the pastor. Now, he's working today, cannot be here, but he sends his love, and uh, we love him, and we want to salute him and pray that God would give him a prosperous pastorage here at the St. Paul Church. I want to respect to this uh, to the family, the Green family, and I have been adopted into the family. That's right. That's right. Mother Ruby, she adopted me, I adopted her. I've been hanging around the family for a while. And I want y'all to know I'm I'm not going nowhere. I'm not going nowhere. Now uh, uh I want you to pray with me now. Uh, I've always been honest with congregations and churches. Um this is not my first rodeo. Um this is the church, the St. Paul Church. When I was a boy preacher, my granddaddy passed here for years, and he would bring myself here, my brother Charles, and I got an opportunity to practice preaching many, many years ago. I've um, been trying to practice for 52 years, and I've been a pastor for 40 four years and um, I rode Mother Ruby with me and I was helping her get in the church and because they were putting a rush on us I uh, forgot my Bible and uh, I have a real good sermon in my Bible but the Bible is in the car so what I'm going to do I'm going to preach from memory and if I mess up, don't y'all laugh at me. When you get home, preach it yourself. Um, I can't preach his funeral. He lived his funeral. And nobody can preach yours. You live your funeral every day. But his my task here to uh, remind us that our day is coming. And it's my task to hopefully make us reflect on our own immortality. Meaning, uh, Bishop, we can be here today and we can be gone before the sun go down. Uh, the thought that comes to my mind is found in the book of Zephaniah. That's with a Z. Zephaniah. And Zephaniah chapter 3 and verse 17. And uh, Pastor Rana, it uh, reads like this. If memory serves me correctly, the Lord will rejoice over thee with singing. In the time of your trouble, when you're going through your season of sorrow, problems, and perplexities, when you're at the cross road of life, when you have a moment, when you are mourning, when you're having a moment 
when you are miserable, when you can't see your way and don't know what the next step that you're going to take, it tells us that the Lord All right. will rejoice over you with singing. I don't think you heard what I said. The Lord will rejoice over you with singing. Allow me to uh, develop this and I'll be out of your way. Uh, I uh, teach preachers. I teach hermeneutics. And I teach the young academicians, the young pastors, preachers. I tell them, do not run over words. Because words are in the Bible not for declaration, but they are there for discovery. And so when we begin to walk through this narrative, it says very plainly, the Lord. The Lord. Sometime in the Bible, he is called Jesus. Sometimes he is called Christ, but sometimes he is called the Lord. As Jesus, he's a man. As Christ, he's a Messiah. But as Lord, he's a master. As Jesus, he's the way. As Christ, He's the truth. Yeah. As Lord, He's the life. Right. As Jesus, He thought it. As Christ, He sought it. Mm -hmm. But as Lord, He brought it. Yeah. Ain't nobody gonna talk to yeah. you. Right. As Jesus, He died before lunch. Yeah. As uh, Christ he's buried before supper but as Lord he got up before breakfast and I didn't know him yet so you shouldn't run over words the word the Lord everybody said the Lord the Lord uh, in the Bible, there are 1,189 chapters that are in the Bible. 1,189 chapters are in the Bible. So that means, Pastor Bailey, the question you ought to ask is, where is the center of the Bible? Out of 1,189 chapters that are in the Bible, the center chapter and verse that are in your Bible is Psalms 117. All right. Psalms 117, watch it now, have 14 words. And the middle word of that verse, watch it now, have eight letters. And these eight letters, watch it now, form a uh, the two words mm -hmm. and the two words that are there when you add them up they make up seven letters yeah. and one word word seven is the t-h-e yeah. the eighth word is l-o-r-d lord yeah. so the middle of your bible at the middle chapter in the middle verse of the bible is the Lord. Yeah, right. Come on, Lord, I had the right crowd. So don't run over a word. The Lord will sing over you with rejoicing. Oh my man. That blows my mind. And the reason why it blows my mind because I discovered something, St. Paul, yes, sir. family, yes, sir. and pastors, yes, sir. and all of you academicians. I, yes, 
Baptisms that are that are in the Bible. I, I thought I I thought I knew about God. He has a fingerprint on the sun and a footprint on the cloud. It's a fingerprint on the sun because he held the sun for Joshua. It's a footprint on the cloud because he stepped on the cloud when he went back to glory. Thought I knew something about. Right about God. Right God spoke and everything came into existence. Amen. Everything came about because he spoke it. Amen. But man is the crown of his creation and the reason why man is the crown of God's creation, he spoke everything else. Monkeys and elephants and giraffes and orangutans. He spoke plants, everything else into existence. But when he got ready to make man, he said, now let us form man. Now, when you speak something, it was created by his voice. But for you to form something, you got to put your hands on it. So that tells me the first thing that God touched was the homo sapien. You didn't hear what I just said. And this is what makes you the crown of God's creation. The first thing God ever put his fingerprints on was man. And this is why you keep returning to the church house every Sunday. This is why you keep coming back because you want to feel that touch one more time. If I had 10 folk helping me, I sure would preach today. I thought I knew. I thought I knew about God. The God who formed eons and spun worlds into existence, Amen. painted the Milky Way and the constellation Amen. system and pointed it out with black holes and black drops. The God Amen. who put nine planets on a merry-go-round and they have yet to have a cosmic collision. Amen. The world who measured the waters in the hem of his garment, scooped out rivers and rivulets, used the leftovers for mountains, hung the clouds on invisible strands of expansion, painted the sky blue without using a step ladder, taught a spider to sew and she never went to home economics, taught the birds to sing and they never come to choirs. If I had my Bible, I would do a little bit better. Y'all ain't helping me. I'm talking about God. I thought, I thought I knew. I thought I knew about God. Right. Put sugar in the cane and sour in the lemon, right. yeah. honey in the hive, right. yeah. protein in meat, right. calcium in milk, yeah. gave the Eileen a great sense of humor and the alligator a bad attitude. I thought right. yeah. <laughs> that I knew about God. Right. And even when God made you, he made you to be a reflection right. of his Bible. Yeah. Oh, you ain't got to believe me. Let's come in a little bit closer. Let me press my claim. All right, look at your hands. And in your hands, you have 27 bones. So it's 27 books 
in the New Testament. Look at your foot. You got 39 bones and it's 39 books in the Old Testament. Seven is the number of completion, so he put seven holes in your head. You're looking at it like I'm making it up to your eyes, to your nose, to your ear, one in your mouth. Anytime you got more than seven holes, something wrong with you. Somebody go help me preach up a while. No wonder he calls you the crime of his creation. Come here, come here quickly. No wonder he calls you the crowd uh -huh. of his creation. He gave you a mind for education, eyes for observation, mouth for communication, tongue for taste sensation, parts of the blood have circulation, skin for insulation, hands for your occupation, feet for transportation. You are in me. The crown of his creation. All right now. And I thought, I really did. Mother Parker, you've been knowing me since I was a little baby. I thought I knew about God. When you look at God, he selected me. When I look at Jesus, he saved me. When I look at the Holy Spirit, he seals me. I thought that I knew. I knew about God. But out of all of what I know, we could go on and on, but y'all ready to go eat because I see you licking your lips. But, but, but out of all of what I know, <laughs> About God, here's something, Pastor Valentine's, I get a new revelation. Come on, man. Come on, Bishop. God sings. Read the verse. Zephaniah. Read it. Read it for yourself. If you think I'm making it up, read it. 317, it says he's the God that sings over us. Yeah. With rejoicing. Yeah. Yeah. Question you ought to ask yourself right now. There are three questions. Uh, I'm a student at ETBU. I'm the darkest thing in class. Here I am, right at 60 years old and still going to school. Yeah, yeah what's wrong with that? They gave me a three year scholarship. Of course I'm going to school. Yeah, right now. If you don't go to school, the only thing you do is get up and say a few things and start hollering, I know he's all right. Yeah. You didn't catch what I just said. So I go to school so I can have something to tell my people. Yeah. And so I learned that good preaching is asking good questions. And these are the questions that we ask, and then I take my seat. Come on, Bishop. I told you he's a God that sings. I didn't know God could sing. Uh -huh. So now the questions we ought to ask is, when do we sing? <laughs> and, and, and you ought to want to know, what do he say? And, 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 and then finally, who do he sing to? <laughs> Being that you, that you sang, we had no idea that you could sing. I knew you were awesome in your action and beneficial in your blessings and constant in your care and diligent in your devotion. The race of our errors, famous in your friendship, gateway to glory, highway to heaven, wellspring to wisdom, heretical in your insight, judicious in your justice, master of men, nationally known for your niceness, operator, architect, of oceans and oasis, pinnacle of perfection, savior of sinners, high tower of truth, Y'all ain't talking. I'm standing up the universe. I knew you 
an alpha, beta, gamma, delta, eta, theta, kappa, lambda, mu, nu, nu, two. Because your word does not lie. Amen. It said it right there in the book that you sang over, over us yeah. with rejoicing. Yeah. So the question ought to be asked, Lord, when? When, when? when do you sing? Oh, watch it now. The picture of the message. Whenever you preach a message, preachers, you ought to give an illustration or a picture so people can mentally see. Don't just hear what you say. They need to be able to see and connect with what you were saying. So now this is the picture of the message to help you understand what I'm talking about. At night when a baby is weary and tired and sleepy and hungry and in pain, the baby cries. The baby cries. The baby cries. The baby cries. The, the baby cries. Excuse me, I'm just checking my voice. The baby cries. And, 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 and what happened is the mother, she gets that baby. Puts that baby in her arm and starts to rock the baby. Come on, mothers, help me. And mama starts singing. And the baby just crying, the baby just crying, the baby just crying, but mama just keep on rocking. All right now. And keep on singing. Yeah. Yeah. And eventually that baby uh -huh. will slip off to sleep. Yeah. Yeah. Now come in for a minute. In life, we're gonna have times when we get weary. Uh -huh. We're gonna have times when we get rough and tough. Yes. You're gonna have times when you can't pay your bills. You're gonna have times when folk lie on you. All right, Some of the very ones you tried to help All be right. the first ones to stab All you right, in your back. Right, now. now you're not gonna say amen on this. A lot of times the folk who hurt you are your own kinfolk. Yeah. And that night, when you lay in that bed saying, Lord, why me? I did my best for old Tyrone. Why would Tyrone? Do me like he did. I did my best to help Sally Sue. Why Sally Sue? All right now. Well, do me like she did. I, I Lord, I did my best for that job, and they fired the Lord. I've done nothing but try to help people. All right now. And you mean to say they gonna tear me down like this? While you laying at night in your bed, watering, turning from side to side, mm -hmm. it's then that God mm -hmm. will sing you a song. When he sings the song. And not only do when he sings the song, but who he sang the song to. He sings the song when you're in trouble. When you're confused. When you're sick and tired of being sick and tired. When you think that you can't go no further. When you're at the crossroad. When your back is up against the wall. He sings your song. To teach you that he is the wall. Amen. When you hit rock bottom, he'll sing you a song. Amen. To show you that he's the rock at the bottom. Yes, when the door is shut, he'll sing you a song. Yes, to open up a window. Yes, to teach you that it's more window yes, than it is door. Yes, Matter of fact, he said, I open the windows of heaven. All right. And pull you out. Pull you out a blessing. All right. Or, ladies and gentlemen, I close now. Seem like when someone dies, as long as family is around and friends are coming in, they bring in the Coca Cola and the Dr. Pepper and Seven Up <laughs> and other beverages. Right. What I know you good people don't know nothing about. Yeah. Somebody say help the man preach. Yeah. Long as they bring in the chicken and the barbecue and frying the fish, 
you are right. But when people start leaving, you're trying to be strong. It seems like when you bury someone close to your loved one, it seems like that first night is a long, is a long night. I don't know if you had the opportunity to walk by a casket and look down in the face and see your mother. Look down and see a grandparent, see a child. It seems like that night, to think that they are out there laying in the grave. All right now. That can be a long, long cold night. But what gives us consolation today, church is that it's in those moments. God have a way of serenading you. God have a way of singing you a song. Thank you for listening to me. Singing a song means God is giving you his favor. Amen. And some of y'all in here know about Amen. God's favor. Amen. My credit wasn't that good, but I'm driving a good car. Because God been singing over me. Amen. Some of y'all started out in old water houses where you could look through and see chickens and look up and count the stars. And now you got a nice brick house. Y'all ain't talking to me. And somebody want to know what happened. It's because God been singing me a song. Anybody in here got a job that you ain't qualified for? Some of y'all know more than your manager. And God just keep blessing you over and over and over and over. He just keep right on singing, singing you a song. Well, Thank you for listening to me. Ah, my request is uh, that God uh, will keep on uh, singing to me. Oh, sometimes uh, the road get rough. And uh, the going uh, get tough. Yeah. And people that I counted on, I thought they would be there for me, but they turned them back on me. But oh, it's all right. Uh, Lord, if you just keep on uh, singing uh, your song. Oh, Lord, uh, no the reason you're up here this morning. He woke you up this morning uh, because last night uh, he kept on uh, singing to you. The reason why he keep making a way for you because he keep on uh, singing to you. And some of y'all been in places where they were shooting, where they were stabbing, yeah. and you could have been out of here a long time ago. Yeah. I wish y'all had me preach my sermon, yeah. but can I get you to touch somebody and tell them the only reason I'm still here because God been singing me a song. And I want to tell the green family if I don't see you no more, I pray that God will keep singing to you. Yeah. Goodbye, y'all. Can I get you to wave at me? Yeah. And let's come in agreement today and say, Lord, Lord, keep singing to me. Tell him, Lord, keep making a way for me. Tell him, Lord, keep opening doors. For me, some of y'all ain't moving yet. Tell him, Lord, sing over my children, Lord, sing over my home, Lord, sing over my business. I was gonna sit down, but I feel pretty good now. I might as well go ahead and preach it. Can I get you to tell him, Lord, keep singing over me? Anybody know he'll make a way? Has he been good to you? Has he been good to you? Matter of fact, you don't look like what you
you've been through is because the Lord 